Assalamu alaikum. It's such an honor to be here before you again. And uh, first of all, before we get started, I'd like to uh, acknowledge that Sister Vaz is here from Chicago, who is a uh, like right hand to me, so I know what she is to Brother Minister Farrakhan. Could you please put your hands together for Sister Claudette Johnson, Chicago. to see so many beautiful faces out here in front of us today here at Nation of Islam, Mosque number 27. Brothers, it's an honor and sisters, it's an honor. As you know or if you don't know, I am predicated in that film world. And Brother Sabir, uh, Brother Wiser asked me to step before you, to, you were to receive Brother Khaled Abdul Muhammad and say a few words to you so that you would understand basically why you are here and what that particular industry is doing to you. Uh, since I'm in the industry, I guess I'm considered an expert, but I really don't like the word expert because it means that you don't have, that there are times when you do not have an answer for a problem, that does not make you an expert. But brothers and sisters, I warn you, I urge you, and I engage you to listen to this man, Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad, Minister Louis Farrakhan, through the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. This is your last straw. You have no really other recourse of what to do or not to do, and that's shown by your faces because as I look around, as I see, you're quite mixed up, and there's a reason for it. But we do have the teaching and the teacher to correct that particular problem. As I said myself, I'm in a field where we distort several images. And I've been a rebel since I got into business, which was, I think, in 72. And I, uh, I, I can sit here or stand here before you now and tell you, engage to you what they try to do as you also read the newspapers on a political level and see how they try to disembark upon our beloved minister. Now, the film industry as we know it, we work from, I specialize primarily in film and TV. And you see the finished product. You never see the product before it starts. And I don't think some of you have been blessed to come to studios to actually see how a film or a commercial is made. All you know is you read the newspaper, there's an interview, they call your name and you come to the interview and you do basically what they ask you to do. Because you are used to listening to white folks telling you what to do because you basically went to their school. That's why it's so difficult for you to understand what we as Muslims and Minister Louis Farrakhan and others are trying to tell you because you're not really used to hearing it from a black perspective. As we deal with the situation on TV today, the North Yankees and the Panamanian situation, we were told that November 12th. I mean, how much do we have to tell you before you understand the wisdom that this man has? I mean, they put the skunkology out and you go for it. I don't ask you to go to your offices and act like some megalomaniac in defense of the minister. But somewhere along the line, you're going to have to make a stand because the TV is setting you up like prime turkey. You young brothers who I would be remiss if I called you a gang member. You're a youth. We're a gang, but not in the sense that they want us to be a gang. We're youth. And they are setting up problems for you that will set you in a position that you will never know. They are trying at this day. They have chemical gas that you know nothing about. If they can spray in here, they will kill every black and not a white, and there shouldn't be one of them in here anyhow. But just in case there is, this gas will leave him standing like you see these soldiers. And they have to wear special equipment to spray the gas. They have National Guards in San Diego right now. They have men from London in San Diego right now training to dethrone the young youth members, which they call gangs, in Los Angeles, California, which they call the hotbed. And they want you to go buy these, what they call, they wrote the dictionary. You can't even spell sophisticated. But yet they say you've got a sophisticated weapon, meaning that your weapon is more powerful than their weapon. And the more you keep buying them from the white man, because that's who's bringing them in here, and then he lodged you and he waits to hire Colin Powell, the head of Joint Chiefs of Staff, who they hired over 30, uh, 30 other men, white men, that had better records than he. And the word to be is that now, headlines, Los Angeles Times, gangs have more sophisticated weapons than we as whites. Then they bring the National Guard on you. And you don't have nothing to keep up with them, brother, other than the power of Allah. That's all you have. You can pack all the guns in your house, the Uzi's in your car, and the white man say the Uzi because he know who you're going to kill. He taught you and you don't know different. So why would he sell you a gun if he thought he was going to kill himself? But this mass suicide, and it's, and it's not in the city, it's at your doorstep. And Brother Farrakhan will be here February 2nd, be the will of Allah. 
And you owe it to yourself and to tell all your friends and your mom who may not want you to be there to come and hear Minister Farrakhan. Right. <laughs> the TV is your worst enemy. And I know it's easy to stand here and say it. And you say, wow, brother, that's what you do for a living. But you have never seen me on that punkin' out, though. Come on, <laughs> Not me. And my name is Farrakhan. That'll be on the credits, or I won't do it. And I'm just me. You have to do it your way. I'm just giving you the linguistics of how they deal with you. And I wouldn't tell you not to go into that field. It's a wonderful field when you can make ten and twenty, thirty thousand dollars in a day, or a week, or a month. But you got to be careful what you portray. Yes, sir. And I'm just not like Eddie Murphy. And I'm not knocking Eddie Murphy. I'm not like Arsenio. And I'm not knocking Arsenio. I'm not like Howard Rollins, and I'm not knocking Howard Rollins. I'm not like Jim Brown, and I'm not knocking Jim Brown. I'm not like Sidney Poitier, and I'm not knocking Sidney Poitier. But they're not here. Come on. And Jim Brown is a follower of ours. Let's get that clear right now. And we're the only two that they call celebrities on a national scale that go before these cameras and talk to you about the beast. And I don't care nothing about it. And when Dr. Culler gets through, you won't care nothing about it. But it's not in a negative viewpoint. What else does he have to do to you before you understand that that is your natural, unclean, straight out, direct enemy? And I work for him and I still tell him. Brother, the soul trains and the video is going to take you away from here. I'm telling you what I know, because I have kids. And the white man sits on Park Avenue in New York City two times a year. Two times a year on Park Avenue in the 500 block. That's between 57th and 55th. And ordains your career through television radio advertising. He sells you a Toyota with a white girl in front of the Toyota. And most of you men are going to look at her first. Because if you have a choice between the white girl and the Toyota, you take the white girl because it don't cost nothing, the truck does. <laughs> it's funny, but they play with your mind subliminally. And they do it on a daily and consistent basis. You should be remiss to think of a Black History Month. It's your year. you got 30 days to deal with your people, and you got to deal with his people for the remaining 11 months. It's ridiculous. You must know who your enemy is, and you're going to know by 5 o'clock today. I guarantee you, you're going to know who your enemy is. And you're going to learn to protect your sister. And it's a tough task to ask you not to go to the movies. Because I would feel remiss to say, well, don't go see the movie. But I have never worked on a movie where I've got a percentage, so it don't matter to me. If I never do another, it'll be the will of a lot. Although that's my field, that's how I make my income. But some of us have to get on there and show you other things. To be the first black to do a commercial for John Hancock with a beard, that wasn't no big thing to me. Black men with beard used computers. Why was it a big thing? Bring it on. To have the top commercial on TV for Budweiser about the umpire, and the white man left off Emmett Asher because Emmett Asher was really the first umpire, so they never utilized that. So when they wanted to get rid of me, they could do that because that's not true. It's just a good brother who did a good job. I asked Budweiser for five million for a year. I knew what they was going to say. <laughs> just, just get it over with. We don't have to keep procrastinating and blaming each other. But brothers and sisters, be gauged, be cautious when you leave here. And, and I know it's tough. I can't put that in your minds enough about what they're doing to your TV. Because that's how they set you. So I'm going to leave you as I came. In the Arabic words of Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> down to college time now. Right. We're down to the real deal. Yes, Not that this wasn't real, but it's just on a different subject. But I'd like to introduce before you a brother of mine, a very close friend of mine, a brother I've gotten to know over the years and have worked close with in some situations and in long range in others. But he is before you of the wisdom of the Army Elijah Muhammad and Louis Farrakhan, and he will bring you wise words, words of wisdom that you need to pay close attention to. And uh, this is not a movie. I bring you Brother Sabir Mohammed.
Let's give him a hand. For the Maddox Farrakhan. 